Aloha Pepsi Cola. I'm in the American Legion Plaza in downtown Indianapolis. It's a very misty afternoon here. Uh, 421. How's everybody doing this uh, Wednesday, January 11th? <laughs> well, this is a very neat little area. Because that big building over there, behind the Oblast, is uh, Indiana, well it's like, a, it's like a museum, which I'll have to do a video on here soon. Real cool. Yeah. A tribute by Indiana to the hollowed memory of the glorious dead who served in the world war. So this big, big building right here is actually the main library, I think. At least I think so. But yeah. Such a neat little spot, though. We have this big open field, which I mean, without the pond, it does look very similar to uh, what you would see in Washington D.C. I mean, especially with the all blast and the yeah. <laughs> Really cool. <clears throat> That's the interesting thing about Indianapolis is it is the city with the second most monuments in the United States. And then another interesting coincidence the original, the original uh, design of the city, just like you know, the design of it, <laughs> was made by the same architect who uh, designed the city of Washington in the District of Columbia. So Washington D.C. and Indianapolis have some similarities in that regard when they have kind of started out uh, planned out by the same architect who designed the cities. The city of Indianapolis was actually originally going to be just a, a mile long in all four directions. Starting at where uh, Monument Circle is, the Circle Monument, and obviously the city grew <laughs> tremendously. I think another thing is that I think another thing that was going on with it that that whole prospect is that. All the buildings were to never 
reach higher than the monument in Monument Circle. And that might be why... That might be the reason for the lack of, you know, skyscrapers in Indianapolis or skyscrapers in Indianapolis coming so so much later compared to other cities, especially in the Midwest. I mean, obviously, Indianapolis has skyscrapers, but not as many as you would think it would be. In memory of those who served. contribution total number served This is the veterans of the Korean and Vietnam War. So it's like a continuation of the, the Vietnam War, the Vietnam and the Korean War. 
more veterans. So there's a lot of show around here. I'll have a part two, probably in the near future, where we'll look around the area out that direction. So we'll have that whole museum itself, which is really cool. I will have to do a tour of that here really soon. If it's loud, I'm pretty sure it is. I can imagine it wouldn't be loud, but anyway, I will see you guys all later. The American Legion, the American Legion charter by the Congress in 1919 became the largest organization advocating for U.S. veterans. It established national headquarters in Indianapolis and dedicated the building here in 1925 in the wake of World War I. And it made concerns about internationalism and communism. The American the American Legion promoted military preparedness and 100% Americanism. A, a powerful lobbying group, the American Legion, and its auxiliary influence legislation to enact the U.S. Flag Code, <coughs> Veterans Administration, and the landmark GI Bill, they offered Youth programs like American Legion Baseball Headquarters moved across the plaza in 1950 as men and women of the Legion continued to work for rehabilitation and readjustment of veterans. All right. <laughs> Hopefully you're able, able to gather all that, the traffic. Anyway, <laughs> see you guys later. Peace.